Have you heard of carcinization, the weirdly common evolutionary process where things keep evolving into crabs? Yeah, it's real, and as a result, the world is full of crabs. Box-shaped, flat crustaceans with their tail tucked under their belly. And weirdly, many of these crabs are only distantly related to each other, and each originated from different groups of lobster-shaped crustaceans. The crabs we see in the water and sometimes on the land evolved a common body shape through convergent evolution at least five different times. Okay, so does Mother Nature simply adore a crab? Are we fated to one day become crabs? Well, so far carcinization has only been technically known to occur among the decapod crustaceans, that is, the ten-footed crustaceans, which we are not. Evolution has not yet evolved a mammal into a crab, but maybe one day, if we should be so lucky? It's theorized that carcinization happens because a crab-like shape helps some crustaceans move and dig with more flexibility with their big bulky abdomen out of the way. Does the word carcinization remind you of anything else? Perhaps the word carcinogen that sounds almost the same? That's pretty weird, right? Because carcinogens are substances that cause cancer and carcinization is about crab evolution. So let's do some etymology. The origin of the word carcinization is the Greek word karkinos, meaning crab. And the story goes that the ancient Greek doctor Hippocrates, the same guy as the Hippocratic Oath, thought that tumors in people's bodies looked like crabs. Now, it is a bit weird how we take one guy's description of a thing and keep using that word forever, but whatever. So he basically called the appearance of tumors crab disease, and that gave us the word carcinoma, meaning crab-shaped growths. And that word has the oma ending that has to do with growth, and also shows up in other words related to tumors, like sarcoma, which is a flesh growth, lymphoma, which is water growth related to the lymph fluid, and teratoma, which are so-called monstrous growths that include teeth and hair sometimes. So the word carcinogen, from carcinos plus gen, is the generator of crabs, or as we commonly understand it, the thing that causes cancer. So any cancer signs out there? I bet you're screaming right now. Cancer is the astrological sign of the crab, and its name is literally, for some reason, the word cancer. That cannot be a coincidence. And it's not. Because the word cancer is just Latin for crab. And since the Romans idolized Greece, they took the Greek term for cancer the disease, carcinos, and translated it directly into Latin. So cancer in Latin came to also mean the boxy ten-legged crustacean, and the tumor-forming disease. But neither cancer nor carcinos explain the English word crab, so where did that one come from? That word's of Germanic origin. We used to have the Old English kraba from Proto-Germanic krabo, and this root may have its origins in the Proto-Indo-European root gerb, meaning to scratch or carve. So since English already had a native word for the animal called crab, the Latin word cancer and the Greek word carcinoma were only used in the medical context. Except for scientists who love their Latin and Greek roots, and crab scientists are called carcinologists. By the way, the word crustacean comes from Latin crusta and means what it sounds like, something crusty. So crustaceans are the crusty animals. But the word crusta goes as far back as Proto-Indo-European kreos, meaning to freeze or form a crust, which gives us other words that are kind of crusty, like crystal, cryogenics, and croutons. So let's get back to carcinization, which now we know literally means crabification. This process was first described more than a hundred years ago by the wonderfully named Lancelot Alexander Borodale. And more recently, the scholar Gerhold Scholz wrote a technical definition of a crab as a decapod crustacean with a compact body organization with a depressed short carapace and eventually folded pleod, and also the sternum of the crab where the legs meet has become widened in the crabs as opposed to the lobsters. So the pleon is a crustacean's abdomen, which he's saying are folded underneath the belly in crabs. And the word pleon is of Greek origin and means to swim or sail, because the pleon can be flexed for swimming. Schultz's article talks about at least four different times that evolution made crabs, twice in the Brachiura, which are considered the true crabs. The word Brachiura comes from ancient Greek roots 
Raki meaning short, plus yura meaning tail, so the short tail. And carcinization has also occurred in multiple times in the group of crustaceans called the anomala. The word anomala is related to anomaly, meaning something that breaks the rule, which is derived from the Greek modifier an, meaning not, plus homolos, meaning same. So anomala are that which are not the same. And one group of carcinized anomalins are the porcelanids, or the porcelain crabs, which are apparently named this way because they are extremely delicate and they lose their limbs easily. But they can regain their limbs through molting. And finally, Schultz talks about the lithodids, or king crabs, which are also anomalins that carcinized from an ancestral form that was basically a hermit crab. The word lithodid comes from lithos, meaning stone, and eidos, meaning form, both Greek. And so these are the stone-shaped crabs, which kind of makes sense when you look at the ones that are all spiky, like they're covered in stony spines. I should note that hermit crabs are not considered true crabs just because of the body shape. I mean, look at this thing once you remove the shell. They have this long, wound-up, asymmetrical abdomen, which is really not crab-like at all, based on the boxy, flattened definition that we learned about before. Schultz points out that while carcinization has happened a bunch of times, it happens a little differently each time, so there doesn't seem to be a blueprint by which each trait evolves in order. Each time a new crab evolves, it comes about in its own way. And it does sometimes go in the opposite direction, through the process of decarcinization, where things that are shaped like crabs evolve back into things that are shaped like lobsters. Moreover, the features that evolve during carcinization, the flattening, the shortening of the body, and the way that the tail gets reduced in size, also happen in other types of creatures. So if you take an extremely broad, loose view of carcinization, you can see similar processes happening, for example, in the sharks, which start out as long cylindrical creatures with strong tails, but some of them have evolved to be shorter and flatter with a much reduced tail, namely the rays and skates. So if we think of carcinization in this extremely broad sense, then maybe there is some hope that one day our descendants could evolve into a new lovely type of crab.